Hi, Deborah. Hi. Steve. Welcome to ASU. Thank you for having so me. So glad that you're with us. Very glad to Should be here. Should we take a walk? Yeah, let's do All it. Right. Deborah, we, uh, you know, have lots of people coming through ASU, visiting us, informing our work, sharing mm -hmm. their work, inspiring us. Um, and so we try to have these conversations with people who are big idea people. What has led you to want to approach arts and culture differently? Um, you know, I think you know this, uh, but I didn't come into the arts in a sort of traditional way. Uh, I came to a place called Intersection for the Arts after working more around social justice. And I've always thought that this, like what felt at the time to be a, a sort of handicap or, you know, that you weren't that coming. I, yeah, that I didn't have a certain set of experience, um, I think is actually one of the things that has been most valuable to me. Um, it meant that I was looking at things afresh. It meant that I had questions about why arts organizations were thinking, at least at that time, about community work and artwork as separate hmm. things, rather as a whole. And why is that? And why, what was it about notions of excellence or, uh, or ideas of artistic work that was not complementary to the idea of working in community or with your idea of social justice? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that this is, you know, these are, these are organizations that were born in a certain way. And um, thinking a lot about the role that artists play, but in their institutions, not as much about what the role artists play in the life of their communities. Hmm. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm driven because I want to live in a world that is fueled by creativity, right? right. I want to be in a world where everyone has access to inspiration and imagination. Um, I always say, like, if you really think about it, there are very few people in this world that have the luxury of being able to think about the past, the present, and the future mm. at once. A lot of us are just trying to put food on the table, just trying to get our kids to school, right. um, make ends meet. And if you can't take the time to be inspired and to imagine a future that is different for yourself and your community, it's not yours. So you'd say we have some kind of imagination deficit, that there's not enough I access to those? I think we don't fuel it enough. I think we, we don't, don't value the, the ability that we have to fuel the human imagination. And I think we need our institutions, whether they're educational institutions or art centers, to think of themselves as, as that, as places that are, th are really about enabling communities to thrive on inspiration. And they're there to stir the collective imagination. And, and do you think there's a new generation of artists, designers, and creatives who see that as their role so that they don't just see their lives and their creative work taking place on stages and in studios, but actually are mm -hmm. inspired by mm -hmm. that space to work as an imagination partner with their community? I absolutely do. I, I think that that's, that's a big part of what we see at YBCA, where we have decided that our promise is to be the creative home for civic action, right? The creative home for civic action, that's such a provocative description. So what, what is that? What is the creative, creative home, home for, for civic, civic action? action? I mean, it's really fueled by the idea that the art center can be a place um, for creative people of all kinds. And that we not only commission and present and exhibit some of the most extraordinary, most well-known artists in the world, but that we also create a place for creative people of all kinds, whether you're an engineer or you're a doula or you're an athlete. Um, we're interested in what creativity means to you. Uh, it's, it's, you know, bringing together poets with policymakers and, mm. you know, I love that. just changing the nature of the discussion. Yeah. Uh, making policymakers into poets and poets into policymakers. That's exactly it. Why can't yeah. we, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we feel so aligned with your mission. Um, yeah. How, how do you how do you think about how should in your mind how should universities be preparing graduates, especially in arts and design? You know, we're the largest design and arts college in, in the country. How can we prepare our students to work mm -hmm. with a place like YBCA? Mm -hmm. What I mean, do you think? What do you think we need to make sure? I they... think so many things, but I I think that we want to be inspiring young artists to think about their role in the world, mm -hmm. not just their role as artists, but what they're bringing to the conversation and how they as artists can change things. So um, for us, you know, so many of the artists that we work closely with are people who have 
played in different sectors, who have applied their dance or their painting or their music to something other mm -hmm. um, and something unusual. So to, to know how to be an artist, designer, and something else, to have yeah. uh, a commitment to, substantive knowledge about, and, uh, curiosity about other areas. That's right. And thinking just their... about how, what, what difference in the world can your art make? Okay, so on that question, what difference in the world can your art make, I'm going to ask you yes. how you see using your own creativity to change the world. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, we, we touched on this a little in the beginning of our conversation in that I, I believe that we are at a time, at least in my lifetime, that has, is profoundly in need of inspiration and imagination. And I want to apply my creativity toward rethinking what leadership means, mm. toward rethinking our institutions. Um, because if our democracy is falling apart, these institutions are the delivery systems of our democracy. Mm. We may not be able to count on government at a certain level, but we can rebuild, remake, and continue to insist on our institutions delivering. And so I like to think that art centers can creatively lead the way. What better institutions, right? Yep. To pave the way for change and how all of these things work. Finance institutions, healthcare institutions. Right. But for me, it's, it's a creative endeavor to rethink the role of an institution in the life of its community. Well, you're definitely doing it. Thank you. We're inspired by it. As are you. Yeah. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> Thank you.